shutting down the economy for four to six weeks, according to Michael Osterholm, the doctor advising Joe Biden on the pandemic, would really let us jumpstart the economy because we'd really eradicate the disease, even though there's really no proof that a lockdown is really going to do anything. But what this doctor is proposing is that, well, it's not really going to hurt the economy, because according to this guy, I guess he's not just a pandemic advisor, I guess he's an economic advisor too, but what he's saying is, we'll just have a federal government pay everybody. Michael Osterholm is one of the doctors advising Joe Biden on the pandemic. He has said the US needs to impose a complete lockdown for four to six weeks. Osterholm claims this won't be a problem because the US government can just pay everybody. In other words, Uncle Sam would give every American a paid vacation. I've had my fill of so-called experts who have never lived in the real world, telling me how the real world works. A medical academic expert giving economic advice when even the economic experts don't know what the heck they are doing. I wonder if he handles all his own legal business and fixes his cars and computers, cause he's so smart. Once you start getting this check, you're going to vote for any politician who promises to keep the checks coming and doing whatever they say you have to do to keep getting the check. Chinese social score coming. The last few months have been painful for small businesses across America. These businesses often have a difficult time getting a bank loan. Bubbling up to the surface is the recognition the Fed has played a major role in pushing inequality higher. This was highlighted when Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell admitted it's tough for the Fed to boost lending to smaller businesses. Trying to underwrite the credit of hundreds of thousands of very small businesses would be very difficult, Powell said. He acknowledged that many of these small loans are really nothing more than the personal promises of people struggling to keep the doors of their business open. As the financial pain from the pandemic and government restrictions placed on businesses continue, much of the money thrown out to ease our pain has rapidly flowed into the hands of Wall Street and big business. The reality that most small businesses close in failure underlines the risk involved in loaning money to such concerns. Still, it is difficult to deny the importance of small business in the overall economy. It plays a major role in communities by both creating jobs and allowing individuals to better their lot in life. During a recent exchange between House Financial Services Committee Chairwoman Rep. Maxine Waters of California and Powell, it became evident that Powell was not rushing to implement changes in the way things are done in an effort to aid small businesses and level the playing field. Waters suggested the Fed and Treasury Department lower the minimum size of the loans under the Main Street Lending Program to $100,000 from the current $250,000 to help a larger number of small companies that have been hurt by the pandemic. Powell even went so far as to claim there was little demand for loans below $1 million. A business owner struggling to pay his three workers would dispute Powell's statement about little demand for smaller loans. Both Powell and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin have also voiced concern about the commercial real estate sector and how they both indicated it is not easy for the federal government to craft an aid program to blunt the damage growing in this part of the economy. Mnuchin said the PPP program has played a role in enabling firms to continue paying their rent so landlords can pay their mortgages. There is fear building in the area of commercial real estate that defaults will send property values into a downward spiral. Sadly, the same policies that dump huge money into larger businesses because it is an easier and faster way to bolster the economy give these concerns a huge advantage over their smaller competitors. A big problem is that this often is enough to put smaller companies out of business. The damage this is doing to society is something that will be difficult to remedy. Once businesses close a series of negative events generally unfold such as buildings going empty and debts not being paid. This tends to impact the economy and communities for years. On Thursday Powell and Mnuchin appeared before the Senate Banking Committee and answered even more questions about the hardship the pandemic has brought upon the economy. While they see significant support for legislation that supports jobs and extending the PPP they recognized the gap between the House and Senate negotiations. Still, they gave little doubt more money and fiscal support will be needed and they are ready to act. This includes looking at ways to expand the Main Street lending facility and make the programs more flexible. This means we will probably see more money flowing into a forgivable loan or grant programs. Both indicated the need to get more PPP money to businesses with decreased revenue saying it would be very important in the effort to save jobs. 
The recession this year due to the pandemic-related shutdowns is bizarre in nature due to the extreme intervention of central banks and governments. We have seen many small businesses devastated at the same time personal incomes have soared. Usually, a recession is marked by a fall in incomes or consumers being tapped out and unable to spend. The massive fiscal stimulus that has been unleashed by the U.S. government has led to the biggest surge in personal income in history. In fact, government transfer payments have soared to where they constitute an unheard of 30% of all personal income. To put this into context, the transfer of payments has been rising for decades but the pandemic crisis has allowed it to explode. During the 50s and 60s, it was around 7%. For a short period in the mid-70s and following the 2008 financial crisis it hit the high teens. This is far above any intervention we have experienced in the past. This is why in this bizarre economy nobody should consider the GDP as an indicator of our economic health. In short, the Fed has been subsidizing the 1% at a heightened pace for the past decade and this has both spurred inequality and given big business a huge advantage in the ability to fund its needs. It also means the government has been funding the lives of every American to a greater extent. From the talk now being bantered around, it sounds like all these people are talking about again releasing trillions of dollars into the economy. We should all be aware that the longer this goes on the more power is shifted away from the people and the small businesses that line Main Street. A final thought, it is all very difficult to square this with what Richmond Fed President Tom Barkin said on Thursday. The U.S. recession was severe but also short and is now over, ironically, this is also the same day that St. Louis Fed President James Bullard claimed the economy could fully recover on some metrics by the end of this year. In my opinion, more important than squaring such talk is the fact small business has taken the brunt of pain dished out while Wall Street and big business have eaten their lunch. They will bring about the Great Reset. They will achieve equality by reducing the wealth and employment of the middle class while the super-rich will become the overlords of this new normal. They are deliberately destroying the economy to create economic chaos for they believe they can rebuild it green and end the disparity of income which is communism 3.0. There have been leaked letters many say are fake but they have said exactly this just with more detail. There is a great risk that they will seize all assets and you will own nothing precisely as Klaus Schwab has been telling these leaders when they come to his World Economic Forum at Davos. Schwab and Thomas Piketty are out to conquer the world and force Marxism once again by sheer authoritarianism and tyranny. They have used this pandemic to terrorize people in order to collapse the economy. These politicians no longer represent us, they have crossed the line into despots. They do not believe in capitalism, freedom, and human rights. We are the great unwashed, unworthy to be considered for we are too ignorant to know what is best for us or our family. Their promises of utopia even Lenin knew were false claims. They wish to strip us of all freedom, keep us locked down to destroy our jobs and the fossil fuel industry, and then for survival hand us basic guaranteed income. If we dare to object, they will cut off all funds and starve us to death. The World Economic Forum and the Cobras inside its governing body, like Georg Schwartz, about 121 of his fellow multibillionaires, and academia, have already decided that global totalitarian communism is the only solution to the end times for earning one's daily bread, and internet fees. The master algorithm is being concocted, and has been for over 15 years, at least. The false narrative about the pandemic being the end of life as we know it, is now fully nuclear weaponized by the elite who demand the formation of two classes and no more middle class climbers. Their own class, far above the other class. And us, living in tower blocks, the other class. The Great Reset turns into the Great Debt Reset. The system will not sort itself out. You will have an exponentially expanding current account deficit resulting in infinite amounts of foreign debt. China will own the USA. The US dollar will collapse and in the longer run that UBI won't buy a loaf of bread. The insanity just gets wilder and wilder every day. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.